Hey, my name is Phil and I'm coming at you from Bosslytics and I wanted to share with you my thoughts on Google Analytics 4 so far in a discussion I'm calling 10 things you should know about Google Analytics 4. Awesome. So let's just dive right in. You may have heard Universal Analytics is going the way of the dinosaur, right? You will still see your previous data in the dashboard, but there's not going to be any new hits after, after sometime in June 2023. Three. So you can still use it as an index and a historical record, but it's going to be no longer registering new hits. And that's problematic because you cannot, you cannot transfer your data from Universal Analytics to GA4. So that means if you want year-over-year -year data, it's a good idea to start sooner rather than later. Awesome. So here's another thing. Just a quick heads up, GA4 is still very much in development, so we're all students at this time, and there's gonna be a theme here. I'm gonna talk about new functionality, and just keep in mind that new functionality is getting baked in as we go. So that's pretty exciting to me. Awesome. Now, the Google engineers have spent a lot of time building this backend for the future, and it's definitely a more capable analytics machine than Universal Analytics. So I would advise that we probably get used to using it even as these functionalities continue to roll out because we're going to be using GA4 for a number of years as our analytics for our websites. So I'm most excited about this because events in GA4 are awesome, super powerful, and customizable. Um, there's already some built-in analytics in natively inside the platform which is nice and then when you configure your own events that are throughout the funnel i think the real benefit is that you know with some help and some google tag manager structuring i think just about anybody can build awesome events and then do true funnel visualization which i think i'm probably most excited about so events that are along every part of the journey from top of the funnel to bottom of the funnel everything in between. So I think that's super exciting for me, probably the most exciting thing. And new functionality, as I mentioned, is being built in all the time. So we're talking about privacy, cookie consent, and spam bots. And just anecdotally, I wanted to let you know that some colleagues of mine were complaining about spam bots hitting universal analytics properties a few months ago. And I was looking at universal analytics properties and GA analytics properties of any of the same website. And the spam bots were decimating Universal Analytics, whereas GA4 was unaffected, right? So we are getting new functions and it is a better platform. And I'm very thankful for that. So a little bit of opinion time. Google Tag Manager makes this migration really simple, but one should not think of it necessarily as a migration because you can actually run Universal Analytics and GA4 at the same time. So it's not an either or situation. And again, that process, that process is a lot easier with GTM because you just add the tags to the container. The container's already on your site. Boom. Opinion time yet again. Uh, at its current iteration, visualization is GA, visualization in GA4 is a little tough. I have trouble kind of discerning what pages are performing and what events are performing the most. So I prefer Google Data Studio. So I was familiar with using Google Data Studio to snap into my universal analytics data, and I'm definitely going to continue that. And Google Data Studio is kind of a core offering with my business just because it's my preferred reporting platform. There's plenty of other reporting platforms that you could use out there, but visualization in GA4 leaves a little bit to be desired. And I think the way around that is creating Google Data Studio reports, in my opinion. And opt-in analytics um, is here. So I work in the United States and we're not necessarily held to CCPA and GDPR in my state, right? I'm building all of my sites with opt-in consent baked in. I think that's probably the way we should look at it future, get being ready for the future because we live in an opt-in time for consent for analytics. And 
GA4 is already starting to do that with the functionality that we see in here. And unfortunately, the we will see a traffic loss as an industry because not everyone's going to opt in. But again, we're just looking at this data to understand how people are interacting with their site, regardless of the sample size. So we really do want to demonstrate that we're doing the best things to move conversions and create good content regardless of the sample size of the visitors but i do understand that this is kind of a bummer for some folks and i'm almost certain the industry will adapt and ga4 is going to still be very much meaningful in understanding behavior patterns of users on your site so thank you so much for watching my name's phil and this has just been ga4 101 10 things you should know about ga4 i hope this is helpful there's a lot to be excited about and if you have any questions drop them in the comments section and thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that stuff. And see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.